a Plaguelands Media production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another graphic novel review, so cheers. This time we are going to go to the next book in the Batman One Bad Day series. That is Catwoman. There we go. Batman One Bad Day, Catwoman. Fantastic art on the back there. Uh, Catwoman, of course, uh, appeared in, well, Batman Issue 1 in 1940, although at the time she was known as the Cat. She has had basically an on-again, off-again relationship with Batman. Uh, such a popular character that she got her own solo series in 1993 that has been kind of ongoing ever since. There have been some absolutely fantastic Catwoman stories. She was great in um, the Batman TV show, um, Eartha Kitt, Julie Newmar. Um, awesome in the animated series. Wasn't a huge fan of the whole getting engaged to Bruce Wayne thing in uh, Batman Rebirth, and then she called the engagement off. Although that storyline did spark the... Um, story that would become the War of Jokes and Riddles, which is one of the greatest Batman stories ever fucking written by Tom King. So, yeah, if you wanted to know what I thought of this without any spoilers, come on, this is a Batman One Bad Day. I've done, uh, what, four of these already? This is the fifth one. Absolutely loving them. We've still got Bane, Clayface, Ra's al Ghul to go. And, um, Alan Moore's The Killing Joke, because that appeared in the Deluxe Collection as well. Then when I've done all of them, I will review the Deluxe Collection as a whole and let you know what I thought of it as a product. But, let's just get right into the next episode of... Read a fucking book. 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 People. So this is uh, Batman One Bad Day Catwoman by C. Um, Willow Wilson and Jamie McKelvey. Sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. Great cover. The art on the back is also fantastic. And let's get straight into it. So it starts with Catwoman looking at this piece that is about to be sold at an auction. Um, of course, she just likes talking to her cats and whatnot. Goes out. These people are protesting treasures of mid-century France. And she kind of sneaks through the group. And then we get a backstory here with Selena Kyle and her sister and her mother. And her mother is giving away this brooch uh, to a pawn shop in order to get some money. We can see it's a bird outside of a cage. She doesn't want to give it away. It's a family uh, heirloom. But the guy kind of undervalues it and gives her shit all money for it but at least they've got money to eat so you can see that their mother was trying to provide for them she manages to sneak in to the auction house um the security guards on the roof are kind of a, taking a break she gets past them of course by incapacitating them gets into the air duct slips down puts on her evening dress and sees the piece but it is being observed by an elderly couple. Uh, the elderly couple explain the provenance of it, that the Nazis, when they controlled Europe, uh, basically controlled art and everything. So the brooches where the bird is in the cage signifies Nazi-occupied countries. But when the Nazis were uh, out of power, basically after the Allies won World War II, the people would make the same brooch, but the bird was out of the cage. And that's the significance of that brooch. Um, you can see the bird is out of the cage there. 
which Selena kind of takes to heart a little bit after talking to these women. She races to get to the auction, knocking, uh, going through the kitchen, knocking over some people there as a diversion. And um, as, the, as the auction comes up, um, the two people that are due to bring the item out into the auction, uh, Selena runs into them, knocks them over, and she apologizes. She pretends to be a caterer at this point, apologizes, grabs the food. They take the box out. But, of course, that box is empty because Selena has pocketed the uh, brooch that her mother sold to the pawn shop. Now, the way that it was discovered was just pure luck. Uh, someone found it in the pawn shop who knew what it was, and that's why it's up for auction for so much money. <clears throat> Selena is, um, of course, happy with her acquisition. She calls her sister. Uh, her and her sister have been estranged for a while, and her sister is like, really? You're calling me over that brooch? You know what? Fuck you. We really don't need to talk about this. Selena's a bit perturbed uh, that her sister doesn't really give a shit about the brooch. Her sister's on hard times at the moment. She takes it, Selena takes the brooch to a fencer, someone who can uh, appraise it and sell it. And unfortunately, he lets her know that it is a fake. It is not the real thing. Uh, of course, Selena is pissed off by this. Uh, the guy tells her the reason it's not the real thing is because of the settings, the jewel settings in the brooch itself, which is something that the elderly woman said to her. It's a unique piece because of the, the jewel settings. So she puts two and two together and realizes that elderly woman knew that it was a fake all along. Um, so she tracks down the woman to her apartment where she runs into Batman. Uh, she accuses Batman of following her. Batman is like, uh, no, I'm following that bitch. That bitch has been putting fake shit on auction houses for months now. We've been building a case against her. Um, Selena wants to do it her way, so she kisses Batman, and Batman's like, hey, do what you want, baby cakes. She goes down there. She confronts the old woman, who has now changed her appearance a bit. They get into a fight. The old woman is actually a lot stronger, quicker, smarter, faster than she seems. And she ends up defeating Catwoman in the fight. Catwoman is kind of out of it. Batman comes. She's like, did you follow her or me? He's like, I followed you. I just need to know that you're okay. Um, will I see you tonight? She's like, yes, you will. She's got the black eye from the fight. She has the brooch. She calls her sister to smooth things over. And her sister's like, listen, let's just get coffee tomorrow. And Catwoman's like, that would be great. So ultimately, uh, this is one bad day for Catwoman because she doesn't get what she wants. She loses, but she has somewhat reconciled with her sister. So it kind of all works out in the end. We get the covers, of course. This one is fantastic. That one's cool as well, the bloody Batman cowl. I like that. Then we get some black and whites in here, which is always nice to kind of see. And then we get some Batman stuff, some ads at the end. Okay. Batman, One Bad Day, Catwoman. What did I think? Really enjoyed the story. Um, Selena Kyle has always been a hit and miss um, villain slash love interest for me, although the storyline Heart of Hush, where um, Hush manages, manages to subdue Catwoman, cuts out her heart, and she's basically alive on a respirator until Batman can save her is phenomenal. And I would recommend that to every fan of Batman. This was great. 
Um, these one bad day stories, there's not been a bad one so far. This was enjoyable because you got to see two sides to Selena Kyle. You got to see her Catwoman side. You got to see the side with her sister where she does have a family. You got to see a little bit about her mother trying to keep them kind of together. Now, we've gotten a lot of Catwomen over the, over the series. We've got, you know, the 1960s Batman Catwomen. We've got the... Paul Dini, Batman animated series, Catwoman. We've got the Gotham um, Catwoman, which I thought was a really interesting take on the character in so far as she had a familiar relationship with Bruce Wayne before he became Batman. I thought that was really cool. This just adds another dimension to the character. So I, I have nothing bad to say about this story. Great art, great writing, great fun. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the notification bell, have a drink, you know I will. But most importantly, please subscribe to the channel, tell your friends. We've got 400 subscribers, we want more. The more subscribers we get, the more stuff we can do for you. And that's the point of this stuff, is we just want to get content out for you to enjoy. I mean, for fuck's sake, I love hearing the sound of my own voice. That's why I do these videos. That's why I lecture at university. I, I just love talking about the shit that I love talking about. If you saw our role-playing games on a Sunday night, which we will never... Um, stream, by the way, just going to tell you that now, so don't beg us for it. But if you saw for at least an hour and a half, we are talking absolute nerd shit before we get into the game. Why? We love this stuff. We absolutely love it. Books, movies, comics, TV shows, art, whatever it is. That's why we do what we do. That's why Playglands Media is what it is, because we love it. If you love it too, come on, tell your friends. Get them in on the action. You're going to enjoy it. They're going to enjoy it. You know it. So, you know what? Until next time, everybody, stay safe. Have a fantastic rest of your day. But most importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, could you please go out there and read a fucking book, people.